I've recently been tasked with uh, creating a workshop for young Girl Scouts or Brownies. They're around the age of you know, kindergarten to fourth grade. And I need to teach them uh, engineering concepts. And so I thought about the idea of having them make objects that solve problems. How an engineer might do this is they would design something in CAD and then 3D print it, right? That's a really quick, approachable way to make a, make a solution. But the CAD is sort of a problem for someone in kindergarten. And so what I'm thinking is instead, I can provide some sort of problem statement or description or some physical objects that they can interact with that they need to solve a problem by making a shape out of Play-Doh. But then, how do we 3D print something like that? Because of course, as I'll point out to um, the brownies, that this probably isn't an ideal material to solve a lot of problems. It's easy to mold and, um, and you can even let it dry, but it's also pretty fragile. And so the idea would be to 3D print it, but how do we 3D print that shape? Well, that's where this 3D scanner comes in. The idea is that the girls will be able to make some sort of model, right, out of Play-Doh, and then use this scanner to scan it in and we can 3D print the shape out. And so that kind of leads me to the subject of this video. I wanted to know what color we should buy or which color we should use because it turns out that these are kind of sensitive instruments and there's all sorts of materials that don't necessarily play nice with the way this scans. And so I wanted to test at least these two colors that I had available, red or blue. So I actually made uh, four test subjects here. I've got a red cube, a red sphere, a blue cube, and a blue sphere. And I'm curious to see um, how it's picked up by this device. So before we actually start our test, let me show you the software. So what we see here is over on the right, this is sort of our viewfinder or what the device is currently seeing. And then here you can see in the middle kind of the perceived depths. And this is a histogram of all the depth measurements and you wanna have that in a certain range for this device. Something I wanna draw your attention to as I kind of look at my tools here is this square, right? There's this red spot, right? This red spot indicates that the sensor is getting oversaturated, meaning that it's getting too much light reflected. And so we wanna usually avoid that with regular scanning. Um, but I, I point that out because that's important for an argument later. Uh, so now let me change to my picture in picture and let's cast this device on our um, actual subjects here. So check that out, All right? I got little flashes of the red objects, but predominantly all I'm really seeing are the blue objects, right? All that's visible are the blue objects. Interestingly enough, right, the counter is also not visible, right? If I throw this green mat in the picture, it does become visible, right? I can see that, but this black is invisible. And so uh, something that's important to note right now is that these, uh, these red shapes, they aren't showing up red, which means that they aren't reflecting too much light. And so that's gonna be important to think, um, think about later. So how do we know what's actually happening here? Why are these invisible? Well, in order to understand why they're invisible, we wanna see what this camera is actually seeing. That viewfinder is a little bit of a misrepresentation. So in order to um, see what's going on, we're actually going to get a better view of how this device works in a more fundamental level. So let me head back over to our software and I'm gonna close out of it actually. And this is something I like about this device is I can just treat it as a regular camera. And once again, this is a, an epilepsy warning, right? If, if you are prone to having seizures from flashing lights, you might wanna turn the video off. Um, and I'll, I'll stop this after a second here, but you can actually see, oops, let me get it the right orientation. Here's what's happening. This device puts out a structured light, right? So uh, it's in the near IR range, it's around 250, or wait, it's, let me get my numbers right, 780 to 2500 nanometers um, IR, or near IR rather. 
So it's putting out this pattern, and as it hits these uh, hits these shapes, the way that that those straight lines bend uh, gives you an idea of the contour of your shape. So actually, to remove that flashing light, I've got a static image that we can look at here, and right here's kind of what's happening. Right, we can understand why these red shapes are invisible with this picture. The blue shapes have a pretty prominent corduroy pattern here. You can actually see all these lines, but the red, it's almost invisible, right? We can barely see it. You can almost see it kind of in this range, but that's about it. And so that's why these red shapes are invisible, because they're absorbing that near IR light that's being structured and pushed out um, or projected out um, of the scanner. So it's kind of a little surprising actually because you would think that a red material would also reflect IR, uh, but it's actually not the case, right? At least for, for this material specifically, the pigment is absorbing IR. It's surprising, but that's just the way it is.